there is none like unto you. Blessed be your name. In Jesus' most marvelous name, we have given thanks. In Jesus' precious name, we have given thanks. For every thanksgiver this morning, nothing goes down around you. For everyone that has a reason to give him thanks, you are returning in March in your multiplied state. Thanksgiving will never cease on your lips in the name of the Lord Jesus the Christ. For every thanksgiver, there shall be settlement for you today. Thank you, Holy One. Be thou magnified in Jesus' precious name. With a smile on your face, turn to your neighbor, the one that is also smiling, and then you say, congratulations, it's a new day for you. Turn to your neighbor, your smiling neighbor. If he's not smiling, please turn to someone else quickly. Say, the Lord is with you. It's a new day for you. Your story is finally changing in Jesus' precious name. Now, please put those hands together for the Lord. And please be comfortably seated. Hallelujah. Every commandment of scriptures is for our profiting. And this is part four of it. Every commandment of scriptures is for our profiting. And we're going to be rounding it up this week. We started it four weeks ago. And we're going to be rounding it up this week. Uh, let's also remember that the prophetic focus for the month is obedience, gateway to realms of noiseless breakthroughs. Obedience is the gateway to realms of noiseless breakthroughs. And we have confirmed over and again from scriptures that obedience is the only way to prove the validity of any biblical truth. Obedience to the instructions of the biblical truth is the only way to prove the validity of any biblical truth. Because doing whatever the word commands will commit God to confirm his word. Simon, I see that you need a miracle. Now let down the net for a miracle. In Luke chapter 5, verses 4 to 7, it says, Now when he had left speaking, he said unto Simon, Launch, launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a drop. And then he said, and Simon's answering, said unto him, Master, this is my field. We have toiled all night, and we have caught nothing. And at this time, if we don't catch anything up until this time, then there is no hope again of catching anything. But nevertheless, because you have said it, I will let down the net. And then verse 6 says, and when he had this done, they enclosed a great multitude of fishes, and their net break. And then they beckoned unto their partners. Hey, see what God has done for us. Um, he, we just obeyed simple instruction. And then in the process of us obeying the instruction, all the fish of the sea had the word of God. And every one of them ran into the net. Net breaking order of testimony is what God will give you this time. Yeah. Obedience will never make natural sense, but it always produces. Obedience will never make natural sense, but it will always produce. Therefore, wisdom demands that to see what natural people don't see, then you need to do what natural people don't do. Is somebody understanding what I'm saying? You are not ordinary. Therefore, you need to do extraordinary things. What does not make sense to ordinary people is what scriptures commands that you do if you want to see what ordinary people don't see. That is net breaking order of testimonies. You want to see what others have never seen before, then do what the scriptures commands to do, but what they are not doing. Praise the name of the Lord. God, are, God quit forcing people to do anything many years ago. Thousands of years ago, God stopped forcing people to do anything. So whatever you want, however you want your life to go, is your choice and it's my choice. Every one of us, God has given us a choice. Obey scriptures and see this. Don't obey and then you are on your own. For example, he said to Moses, Exodus chapter 35 and verse 5, he said, Moses, take ye from among you an offering unto the Lord. Not unto, not unto Moses, 
He says, but unto the Lord. Does God need their offering? No. But he just decides he wants to bless some people. He said, take an offering unto the Lord. Whosoever is of a willing heart, don't force anyone. Whosoever is of a willing heart, and then let him bring it. And then he said, an offering of the Lord. The Lord is the one that demanded for it. The, one, the Lord is the one that it is, is being given to. An offering of the Lord, gold and silver and brass. Remember, if I'm, not, if I'm in need, I will not consult you. Everything I created anyway. And then he said, but it is wisdom for those who know me to obey it. Verse 10 of that scripture. He said, and every wise-hearted among you shall come. The wise ones will know and make all that the Lord had commanded. The wise ones will do it, and when they do it, they will see the manifestation of my hands. Praise the name of the Lord. People who are wise will always obey the commandments of the Lord, even when it sounds stupid, because the commandments of the Lord never sounds logical. Praise the name of the Lord. How is it logical when you received $100 at work and God said, I need 10 out of it? The $100 is not even enough. It's not enough. To a logical human being, that does not make sense. Why would I give you something that is not enough? But God said, now, for the one that is not enough to be surplus, bring me that 10. Bring me that 10. Now, it will not sound logical to anyone. To the natural mind. But if you want to see, if you don't want to struggle like they are struggling, obey me. Bring what I said you should bring and watch me open the windows of heaven to bless you. Someone here, you won't lack again. Amen. Matthew chapter 7 and verse 24, he said, Therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine, not just hear them and do it them, I will liken him unto a wise man, which built his house upon a rock. Anyone that obeys scriptures is likened unto a wise man. And what that person is doing is simply building something. Because you see, obedience to scriptural instructions does not always yield immediate result. Sometimes it does. In most cases, you need to be patient. When you put seed in the ground, and you keep watering and watering. You know, I read a book recently, and then the man said, the author said, when they were, that he learned a lesson when he was in, in um, elementary school. He said the teacher told all of them, bring a seed. And then all of them had cups in school. And then they, everybody planted the seed. He said then every day they watered it. And at every particular, in a particular time of every day, everybody will go there to see what is happening to the seed. He said everybody will be going there, everybody at a point, first three days, nothing was happening. And then all of a sudden, some people started seeing some things. Some pe he said, but for his own, six days, nothing was happening. Every other person started seeing things. And then he said, after like seven, eight days, he went inside. He went there, he didn't see anything. He said he dipped his hand and brought out the seed. <laughs> he said when he brought out the seed, he saw that the seed was already doing something inside. It was just that it wasn't coming out yet. He said then his teacher told him, you have just destroyed your harvest. You've destroyed your harvest. Everybody is entitled to the harvest, but it is those who obey to the end that will see it. It's not what you do today. They don't think church is trying to coerce you to give. No, because God does not need it. Are you understanding what I'm saying here? God does not need it. You and I are the ones that need it. He is the one upon a thousand hills. He owns everything, including you and I. If he's hungry, we not ask you and I. <laughs> Praise the name of Jesus. Glory to the name of the Lord. His mother. So everybody will, must pass the test of obedience before you qualify for change of levels. You want to change your level where you are now. You see many people think, oh, where I am, I'm just comfortable. This is the best. No, that's not the best because God has higher for you. And until you pass the test of obedience, you are not qualified to change to the next level. His mother, that's why his mother said to them, you want to see something happen? Whatsoever he tells you to do, do it. John chapter 2 and verse 5, it says, whatsoever he saith unto you, do it. 
for example now you want a glorious marriage marriages are ma glorious marriages don't just walk out people walk them out is somebody understanding what i'm saying and so, so, so many of you are watching too much soap opera and they are telling you inside is over hey, sweetheart honey and then you are you are also expecting your your spouse that was born where I was born to be saying that to you every minute. Now, he was not trained that way. And what you are seeing in those things are not real. They are scripts that they told them to be saying. How many of them are actually saying it at home? Is somebody understanding what I'm saying this morning? So it is not uh, sweetheart, honey, and then you are saying, see how this one is saying honey, he's saying sweetheart. You are not even saying any sweet anything to me. You know, um, that's just the way he was, he's being wired. And so, but you want to see a glorious marriage, it is worked out. Any marriage that you see that is working out, it is because the workers, both parties are obeying the laws of marriage. Take a look at it. Ephesians chapter 5, verses 22 to 25. It says, wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as unto the Lord. Now, if you cannot, if you don't want to submit, then you are disobeying what the Lord says. So, to submit simply means, why do you need to submit? So that you can see your marriage glorious. And so, you are not doing your part. Verse 23. For the husband is the head of the wife. That's why he said he should submit. And then, even as Christ is the head of the church and is the savior of the body. Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, so let the wives be to their own husbands in everything. And then it didn't end there. He said, also you, husband, love your wives. Even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it. No matter the condition, show her love. If one person is obeying his part, the other person is not obeying his part, there will be friction. If both parties don't obey their part, there will be commotion. If both parties are obeying their part, there will be enjoyment. In fact, honeymoon. Every day of the year. Is somebody understanding what I'm saying? So, if you are seeing a marriage working, ask the parties, what are you doing? There is always what to do. There is the obedience of instructions that you need to obey in order for you to see what they are, so, what they are saying. Praise the name of Jesus. Now, today, because of our time, let's take a look at another commandment of Scripture that will set us up on high, and that is the commandment of love. Say to your neighbor, the commandment of love. Is somebody alive this morning? The commandment of love. First Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 9. Scripture speaking, it says, But as it is written, I have not seen, nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God had prepared for them that love him. Not for everybody, not for every Christian, but for everyone that loves him. What God has prepared cannot be imagined by anyone. Someone asked Jesus one day, he said, which is the great commandment? And Jesus said to him, in Matthew chapter 22, verses 36 to 40, he said, Master, which is the great commandment in the law? Jesus said unto him, thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. He said, now, not only is this the greatest of commandments, this is the first and the only important one. This is the first commandment, and this is the first and great commandment. It is not just the, the great commandment, it is the greatest and it is the first. And the second is like unto it, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. And then he concluded, he said, on these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Every other thing that you need to do hangs on love. Every, if as long as you fulfill and obey this, this commandment, then you have already obeyed every other one. Is somebody understanding what I'm saying? If you love God and you love humanity, you won't steal from them. 
If you love God and you love humanity, you won't kill them. If you love God and you love humanity, you won't slander them. Every other commandment hangs on this one, on love. If you obey this one, it will be easy for you to obey the other ones. As a matter of fact, obedience of this commandment puts you in command of every other thing. Love God. That's why the Bible says, 1 Corinthians 2, 9 that we read, I have not seen, nor ears heard, neither is it entered into the heart of man. Why? Those, what God has prepared for them that love him from the bottom of their heart. Those who truly love him. Those who completely love him. <laughs> Praise the name of Jesus. Those who love him have pleasant surprises coming. 1 Corinthians chapter 13 and verse 8. Love does not fail. Charity never faileth. But whether there be prophecies, they shall fail. Whether there be tongues, they shall cease. Whether there be knowledge, it shall vanish away. However, the love of God and for humanity is what turns us to a wonder on the earth. No wonder uh, without the manifestation of love, our confession of faith becomes hypocritical. Did you get that? Without the manifestation of love, our confession of faith becomes hypocritical. Just as it is not easy to love, you know it's not easy to love God. To love humanity is harder. And I will show it to, you, to us very shortly. Because many of us claim that we love God. Ah, you will wait now and see whether you truly love him. Praise the name of the Lord. You will weigh it when I tell you, you will check inside. Uh, do I really love him the way I claim I do? Many of us love gold more than we love God. Praise the name of the Lord. And we are going to find out very shortly. How do you love, because if we say we love God, and God says there are only two things, love me and then love humanity. How, but how do you love those who despitefully use you and persecute you? But that is one of the commandments. That is one of the proofs that you say you love him. Matthew chapter 5 and verse 44. It says, but I say unto you, love your enemies. Bless them that curse you. Do good to them that hate you. And pray for them that despitefully use you and persecute you. Even in the church, there are people you don't greet again. So how can you say you love God? You are in his house. There are people you are still keeping grudges with. Are you seeing it now? Do you really love God now? <laughs> Praise the name of Jesus. There are, he said, well, well, but this is my condition. Pray for them that despitefully use you and persecute you. It is not easy, but that's what he says to do. There are even spouses who are not talking to each other. Who came to church this morning and are hearing me right now? Are you hearing what I'm saying? Now, how do you prove that you love God when you don't even show love to yourselves? Even among ourselves. So how do we want to prove that we love God? Because God says that is the second one, to love ourselves. First one, love me. And if you don't, if it flows from the top right there, may the Lord give you understanding. I said, may the Lord give you understanding. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. 1 John chapter 3, verses 16 to 18. If you say you love God, can you prove it? Hereby perceive with the love of God, because he laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for the brethren. He said, but whoso hath this world's good, and seeth his brother have need, and shutteth up his bowels of compassion from him, how dwelleth the love of God in him? He said, my little children, let us not just love in word, let us love in deed, in truth and in deed. In other words, if we say we love God or we love humanity, let's prove it. We can prove it. Our profession of love should not be just in words, it should be in action. So just as we love our spouses, we, we say we love our spouses, every one lover of God should also be able to prove their love for God. Just like you are saying, because for some spouses, if you say I love you, they will say prove it. Because your action 
speaks against what you are saying. So then prove it. The same way we have to prove our love for God. Praise the name of the Lord. Now, very quickly, how can we prove our love for God? Is somebody ready? Ask your neighbor, are you ready? Ask your neighbor very well again, are you ready? Now you ask yourself, am I really ready to hear it? <laughs> Praise the name of the Lord. How do I prove that I love God? Number one, if you love God, you will love his house. The house of your lover is never far. Now I've said it over and over again. Praise the name of the Lord. The house of your lover is a delight for you any day, anytime, anywhere. The day the house of your lover becomes too far or becomes a burden, then you are falling out of love. You know people fall in love and they fall out of it. <laughs> Praise the name of the Lord. Many claim they love God, but coming to, this, to his house is a burden. David said, Psalm 122 and verse 1, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Check. Do you really love God or you are just looking for, you are, or you are in trouble, you want to get out of it, or you are just looking for something? Praise the name of the Lord. For some people now, if you tell them, go to, Mac Mac is it Macento they call it? Ma where that school is. They say, go there right now. Um, be why? Because he said, no, no, that, Macento is not far now. By, that, because that's where his lover is. Are you understanding what I'm saying? So it's not far at all. Makinto, just about two and a half hours. I can do it even in an hour and a half when the road is good. You know, I'm just going to be. Why? Because his lover is there. Let them bring the lover here. There's no sense in Paul. And then you now tell him, ah, since you used to go to Makinto, can you go and, ah! It's too far. Ah, I came to okay. At this time, why? Because his heart is not there anymore. His lover is not there. Where your lover is will not be a challenge for you to go. Love his house. If you love God, you will do what? You will love his house. Praise the name of the Lord. Stop. Go into his house when you are in trouble or when you need something. You know, two lovers, one thing that can discourage a lover is when this other lover finds out that the only time you have, you come to them is when you need something. At a point, they will say, no, 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 you don't love me. I have found out that it's only when you are in need or you need something, that's when you show up. At a point, this other lover will cut you off. God will not cut you off. Amen. I said, God will not cut you off. Amen. I said, this God will not cut you off. Amen. So, love is house. A proof that we love him is that the, his house will not be a burden. Going to his house will be a delight. Because you, your, your, the house of your lover is not far. Number two, quickly. How can we prove our love for God? If you love God, you will have time for him. If you love God truly, then you will have time for him. You see, even when you are showering your lover with money every time, a day will come, they will tell you, no, I don't need your money, I need your time. Praise the name of the Lord. They will throw the money at you and tell you, no, it's you that I need, stay. <laughs> Praise the name of the Lord. You know, in those days, we used to sing one song. My lifetime, I will give God my lifetime. If I give God my lifetime, he will take care of me. He will never, never let me down. I will give God my lifetime. Still give him your lifetime because he will not let you down. When he has your time, then he will be delighted at you. 
when he has your time. You know, something happened recently. My daughter had been saying all oh, every time, there's this thing they do in school, lunch time or something with parents. And she had been asking every time that I come, I come, I come, and I don't have the time. So it's the mom that had been going every time. So this time when the mother was in Nigeria, it is another time to go. And then she said, now that mommy is not around, will you come? I said, I'm not sure. I knew inside me because the mother already told me that this is the day that you have to go. So I had to put it in my calendar in, in the office. And I had to put it in my reminder to be telling me daily, don't forget two more days, don't forget so, so, so time. So when the day came, I, I just wanted to surprise her, so I just went there and she didn't know. And when she saw me, look at the, the, the come and look at her face. She couldn't even talk to me for a while. Why? Because of the, the shock and the, and the joy that this is my dad. And then she started telling everybody, that's my dad. That's my dad. You know? Uh, but you know, I, I saw something that day. Some of the students, none of their parents had probably ever attended. So, when they were looking, and then to now see a father come. They were all looking at me like, and the, the look on their faces was like, I wish my dad could come too. Please visit them in school. Go tomorrow, tomorrow, tomorrow. Even if there's, <laughs> even if there's no lunch, go and create your own lunch time and go and eat with them. Is somebody understanding what I'm saying? Because creating time for you is a proof that you love someone. Is a proof that you love them. Praise the name of the Lord. Many of us are preoccupied with other activities, but we never create time for the God of the activity. Praise, praise the name of the Lord. We have time for every other thing, but we don't have time for God. And God is saying, I need your time. I want your time. Psalm 119 and verse 164. He said, seven times a day do I praise thee. That's David speaking. Seven times a day do I praise thee because of thy righteous judgment. Seven times a day. That is, I go to your house. I have so much time. This is a king who has time, who still has time for his lover. That no wonder God said concerning him, ah, David is my is my right eye. Is the apple of my eye. You know, the apple of your eye is somebody that you love that nobody can play with. The apple of my eye. That's why he never lost a battle. Because God was the one fighting all his battles for him. He said, he will take care of me. He will never, ever let me down. There are battles you are fighting on your own. If, if you had time for God, God is the one that will be fighting the battles for you. The, the reason the battle came at all is because you didn't have time for God and God needed your attention. So it would create one small thing. <laughs> Praise the name of the Lord. Nothing will overcome you again. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Paul said in Romans chapter 18 and verse 8, sorry, let's go to the next one because of time. Number three now. Hallelujah. If you love God, you will love what he loves. And what does God love? God loves souls. That's why he came. That's why he gave up his life. God had everything. He created the gold and the silver. Everything God created by himself. But only one thing did he give his own son for. Souls. Um, we may be in a place where we can't really go out and be blasting, come to Jesus, come to Jesus. But there is one little thing that you can do to that human being, that co-worker, that, that person living in the same apartment building with you, that you know they are having challenges. Not only challenges, you know their lifestyle is dangerous. Bring them to Jesus. Just invite them. You want to come with us to church? Keep saying it, one day they will come with you. And because God, prayer is already going on, as they come, the Lord himself will be the one to arrest them. And as they arrest them, they go again and they also bring others. But let it, let, don't, don't let it be that no one person will say, 
concerning you. If not for this man, if not for this woman, I will not be in church. I will not know Jesus. That's the reason he came. He says he loves souls. So if he loves souls, then it should be uppermost in our heart to also love souls. But you know why many cannot preach or tell people or invite people? Because of your attitude. And the attitude must change before they can follow you. Because what you are telling them to do, they are not seeing it in you. Until they begin to see a proof of it in you, then as, in fact, some of them will be coming to you, where do you worship? I want to go with you. That's why we need to change our attitude. Even to people who are coming to church for the first time, church members need to change attitude to welcome them with the whole of, their, with the whole of your heart. That somebody, put, if somebody wants to sit down, they, your, your bag is down. No, 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 you can't sit here. The person is coming for the very first time. They, there is no amount of prayer you pray, only Jesus can bring them back. Is somebody getting what I'm saying? Like I said to you some time ago, I shared this before. In Kaduna in those days, one day there was this sister that came. Um, I was sitting somewhere and I can't, I don't know what happened, but the usher was just telling the person something and this lady just was, but I didn't know. And then she just, I mean, just kept quiet and was just like that. And then I had to go to her, I said, and she was sitting very close to me. I said, no, you know, we are not like this here. I said, I'm very, very sorry about, for what happened right now. I think it was just a misunderstanding, so please, we are not like that. You know, the next thing that happened, they were calling for testimonies, and they called her name, and she went out. And then she started saying that she had mental problems, that God just delivered her. Do you not think that that person can trigger that thing again? <laughs> if you are not nice to them, is somebody understanding what I'm saying? Now, this person is coming to church to come and thank God for deliverance. And inside church, somebody wants to put it back. <laughs> Praise the name of the Lord. Let, us, let our attitude change towards people, towards everyone you see in church. Be nice to them. Not only don't you know what, why they are coming, you don't know where you will meet. May the Lord give you understanding. In Jesus' precious name. Paul said in Romans chapter 13 and verse 8, he said, Oh, no man anything but to love one another. For he that loveth hath another hath fulfilled the law. Oh, no man nothing but to love them. That's why Jesus said, Love is the first and love is the greatest. Verse 10 of that scripture, Romans chapter, eight, eight, chapter 13. It says, love walketh no ill to his neighbor. Love walketh no ill to his neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfilling of the law. Because everything that works in the kingdom hangs on love. For example, giving hangs on love. You are giving everything you have and you don't have love. God says, I'm not even accepting it. 1 Corinthians 13.3. He says, and, I be, and though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be born, he says, and have not love, it profited me nothing. That's why Moses said, look, don't bring, if you know it is not from your heart, don't bring it, because God, God is not hungry. Scriptures tells us that we can receive nothing except by faith, and faith works by love. Scripture says you can receive nothing except by, law, by faith, and faith also hangs on love. Hebrews chapter 11, verses 1 to 6, it says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. It says, For by it the elders obtained a good report. And then it says, Through faith we understand that the walls were framed by the word of God, so that things which were seen were not made of things which do appear. It says, By faith, Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, by which he obtained witness that he was righteous. God testifying of his gifts, and by it he being dead, yet speaketh. By faith, Enoch was translated that he should not see death, and was not found because God had translated him. For before his translation, he had this testimony that he pleased God. So these are the great, great things that faith can do. And in verse 6 it says, but without faith, we can't even please God. But 
even faith now hangs on something to walk. Galatians chapter 5 and verse 6, he said, For in Jesus Christ neither circumcision availeth anything, nor circumcision, but faith which walketh by love. You may have the greatest of faith if, you're, if you are not in, if you don't love God, you don't love humanity, it is not going to work. That's why some people's faith is not working. Because there's no love attached to it. That's why love is the greatest. 1 Corinthians 13, 13. Now abided faith, hope, charity, I mean love, these three. But the greatest of these is love. And that means without the manifestation of love, our confession of faith becomes hypocritical. If you don't love God, you don't show love to humanity, you know why some people are praying God, the answer is not answered? Because you are not in love with God. One, you are not in love with humanity. Inside the prayer, listen to the words of the prayer, it is even like enemy, 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 break this one, break that one. No, that's not what God said. He said, pray for them. Not so good your enemy. Some people are the enemy of themselves. Just, you are just praying against yourself. <laughs> if you just show love to God, show love to humanity, there are things you will not need to pray for. Why? Because instruction, instructions are principles just work if you obey the instructions of principles. You, there are things you will not need to be praying for. They will just be happening on their own accord. Why? Because you are in obedience to scriptures. I see some people changing level here. I see people changing levels here. I said I see people changing levels here in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Why? Because your mentality should be changing right now. Romans chapter 5 and verse 5. He said there, And hope maketh not ashamed, because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, which is given unto us. So only the Holy Ghost can help us to truly love in deed and in truth. When you, when you have, you receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost, is the only one that can help you to love in truth and to love in deed. Praise the name of Jesus. So please tell yourself, I'm going to make a commitment to love God this year. Say it to yourself if you believe it. <laughs> I'm going to make a commitment to love God this year. Genuinely. Make a commitment to love God genuinely. Because you don't give your lover excuses. Otherwise, they will fire you. You didn't come today. Yeah, you see, when I was coming, the tire, okay. So will you be here tomorrow? Yeah, 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 first thing tomorrow I'll be there. And then they are waiting, 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 waiting. Then they call you again. You know what happened? The lady who said, that man is not, that guy is not serious. I'm cutting him off. Why? Because you are not there. Serve him genuinely. Love him genuinely. When you love him genuinely, serving him will be easy. May the Lord give us understanding. No more excuses in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Well, it's also a covenant day of settlement. And someone here will be supernaturally settled today. I said someone will be settled supernaturally today. In the glorious name of the Lord Jesus the Christ. In every troubled area that you came in here with today there shall be settlement to settle means to resolve definitely and conclusively to resolve definitely and conclusively first peter 5 10 he said but the god of all grace who hath called us unto his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after that ye have suffered a while, he said, will make you perfect, establish you, and strengthen you, and then settle you. That is, whatever you may have gone through is supposed to be for a while. And then after a while, God said, then I will settle you. Your time of settlement has finally come. To be settled means to be established. For example, when you move from one area of the city to another, people will be asking you, have you settled down now? Have you settled down now? In other words, they are simply asking, are you established now in that place? Second Samuel chapter 7 and verse 10, it said, Moreover, I will appoint a place for my people Israel, and I will plant them. And then it said, that they may dwell in a place of their own and move no more. 
neither shall the children of wickedness afflict them anymore as before time. Remember, if we want to settle, if God wants to settle us, because God is a spirit, then there will be spiritual demands. There has to be spiritual demands. That is spiritual laws that must be obeyed. 2 Corinthians chapter 10, 3 to 6, he said, let's just read verse 6 because of time. He said, and having in a readiness to revenge all disobedience when our, disobe our obedience is fulfilled. So there are spiritual demands that God is asking of us in order for us to be settled. Someone here, you have failed that exam several times, but this next time you are coming out in flying colors because God finally wants to settle you this time. Someone, you have been believing God for the fruit of the womb, it is time to settle you now. Someone, your marriage, your marital destiny, there is settlement right now already in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Well, what are those demands? Number one, you must be born again. You can't come to a place where you don't have DNA to be settled there. You have to have the DNA of this kingdom and that means you need to be born again. Remember, God is spirit, and they that help, if he must help you, you must be in the spirit. John 4, 24. God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. You can only be settled if you belong in the kingdom. The, the devil was the one that stole it from you in the first instance. And so to get away from him and to be settled, you need to change kingdoms. Praise the name of the Lord. To escape the world of unsettlement, salvation is a requirement. Habakkuk, Hebrews chapter 2 and verse 3, he said, How shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation, which at the first began to be spoken by the Lord and was confirmed unto us by them that had him? Salvation is the only escape route. If you have escaped, then remain escaped. Is somebody understanding what I'm saying? You are not going to be doing one leg in, one leg out. If you haven't escaped, your escape time is today. And if you have escaped, then you remain there. So that the covering does, is not taken out. The covering of, of, of settlement is not taken off. If you are born again, don't leave your roots. If you are not, you need to accept him today. Number two, for those who have left, you must fully return to God. Fully return to God. Our return is the key to activating our settlement. Until we come to ourselves, there can be no settlement. You know the prodigal son? The Bible says he came to himself. That what, is it, what is this one that I'm doing? I, my father has everything. And then I left home. And I got beaten and battered. That's how the devil takes people out of the church. Everything is already here. But they are looking for more things. So the devil takes them out and then beats them battered and beaten. And then before they, those who he does not kill come back to their senses and run back to church. Luke chapter 15, 17 to 24. The Bible says, and when he came to himself, he said, how many hired servants of my fathers have bread enough to spare, to eat and to spare, and I perish with hunger. He said, I will arise, I will go back. There are people who need to return to Jesus today because of your settlement. There are many dangerous things that people are putting their hands on. You need to take your hands off and return to Jesus for your settlement. May the Lord give you understanding. And because only those who, are, who, who return are permitted to be settled. Someone, you won't miss your settlement today. Amen. Number three, we must be planted in the house of the Lord. We must be planted in the house of the Lord. When you are planted, then you will be entitled to settlement. Nine, Psalm 92, verses 12 to 15. He said, the righteous shall flourish like the palm tree. He shall grow like a cedar in Lebanon. Those that be planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish or be settled in the courts of our God. He said, they shall, be fat. They shall still bring forth fruit in old age. They shall be what? Fat and flourishing. They shall be fat and they shall be flourishing. 
you will be getting fatter and fatter in the spirit in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Nothing goes down around you again. Amen. I didn't hear your amen. amen. Your settlement is, however, tied to your planting. There is a place that God has prepared for you. Find it and stay there. You can't, people don't get planted when you remove the root. You remove it now. You plant it somewhere else today. You take it out again. You, you remember the one I told you that that guy put it, took it out? He killed the, the seed. Find the place that God has prepared for you and abide there. And just abide there. And all today, uh, you know, uh, somebody invited me to one church. I said I should go and try it. And then uh, the following week, another person invited me to another church. So I wanted to go and try it. And then, uh, for some people, the only thing you are enjoying there is when they are welcoming you. Every Sunday, so welcome. Everywhere you are going, is every Sunday they are welcoming, 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 welcoming. That's why there is no root. And if there is no root, then you can easily be uprooted. But when you have found your root, nobody can uproot you. Are you understanding what I'm saying? When your root is sure, it will be difficult for anyone to uproot you because you know what you are doing. Second Samuel chapter 7 and verse 10. Moreover, I will appoint a place for my people Israel and will plant them that they may dwell in a place of their own and move no more. Neither shall the children of wickedness afflict them anymore as before time. Why? Because they are in their place. They are already settled down. And then there can be no affliction for them anymore. Every chosen place is a place of settlement. Deuteronomy chapter 12, verses 13 to 14. It says, take heed to thyself that thou offer all thy offerings in every place that thou seest. It says, but in the place which the Lord shall choose. So let God choose that place for you and then you abide there. Mm. Number four, what are the spiritual demands for settlement? We must enter into a covenant to serve God. Service is an automatic weapon of exemption. Praise the name of the Lord. A centurion needed exemption and he said for his servant. So he went to the elders and the elders said, oh, what is the criteria? He said because he's, he's a faithful servant. He serves me. And because this centurion also served the nation, he said, they said he has built us a synagogue. And then Jesus said, okay, let's stop every other thing that we are doing. Let's go and heal this guy. Your settlement is tied to your service. You can't be serving God and be serving sickness. You can't be serving God and not get it, and God will not give you a job. But, you won't let the job he gave you take you away from serving him. Praise the name of Jesus. May the Lord give you understanding. I said, may the Lord give you understanding. I said, may the Lord give you understanding. In Jesus' precious name. And lastly, you pray for your desired settlement. You want to be settled, then you ask for it. James 4, 2, ye ha yet ye have not because you ask not. Until you demand for it, there may be no supply. Somebody today, you are receiving supernatural settlement. Amen. I said automatic settlement Amen. in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. But you need to pray for it. You need to ask God for it. Lord, in this area of my life, I need settlement. I need to be settled. Lord, I'm 40 and nobody's even co coming to me to say, anything this year settle me before I step out of here I let my phone start ringing you don't believe it somebody doesn't believe it <laughs> praise the name of the Lord before I step out of here let my phone bust out ringing let me have the challenge of who to choose let the challenge now be who do I choose now someone here God will show you to your world in the name of Jesus the Christ. You have been suffering all manner of jobs that you, do, you know that you, are, you, you don't want. Ask for settlement. Lord, I need a befitting job. Settlement. Whatever it is that is on the uppermost of your heart, you need to ask him for you to be settled. A closed mouth is a closed destiny. 
rise up on your feet.